Hey, welcome to Five Lakes Garage, and it's the place of random projects. We have Jeeps, trucks, cooking, welding, woodworking. You name it, we probably got it. But hey, um, we do have a giveaway going on right now, and if you would like to enter, there's one thing you need to do. Just gotta subscribe. I'm gonna take a subscriber, uh, randomly picked out of all the ones that I have, and then I'm going to send you a flag. Fourth of July is getting ready to come up. We're gonna make a flag. It's one of my previous projects. I don't believe I made a video of it, but <clears throat> it's gonna be made out of wood. It's gonna be painted correctly, all 50 stars, and we're gonna put a little logo on the back to let you know where it came from. And then I'm going to send it to one of you. Make sure your email is up to date on your uh, YouTube. And I will pick one person on July 4th, 2021. Once we pick that, I will get in touch with you best I can, and then we'll make sure you get your prize. So go ahead and hit the subscribe button, take a peek at what we got, look at all the other videos. I'm sure there's something that is going to uh, sort your fancy. Anyway, we're going to get some cooking done. Welcome back to Chef Mike in Five Lakes Garage. Uh, it is Cub Scout season time, Boy Scout season time. It is just season for scouting. That means it is the season for camping. And one thing that we want to do when we're camping is eat. We love to eat, especially out in the woods. I don't know what it is, but it makes everything taste so much better. So what we're going to do today is actually going to make a dish that you can prep and take out on the trail take it out on camping trips with the Cub Scouts, Boy Scouts, whichever. Not exactly one that you're gonna carry on your back, but you can put it in your trunk for trunk camping. Now, if you have followed any of my other videos <clears throat> about cooking uh, out in the woods with the Dutch oven, you'll know that I love to prep. Everything needs to be prepped beforehand so that you're not out there chopping, cutting, dicing, whatever. Put everything in the cooler, you throw one in, cook it a little bit, throw the next ingredient, throw the next ingredient, all separate in its own Tupperware. And then you can use your Tupperware for leftovers, if there's anything left. Most of the time you don't have leftovers, but sometimes you do. You need to have a place to put it. And you're not trying to make a bowl out of tin foil to put all your stuff in there. So what we're gonna make today? Well, I have a buddy. Uh, he's a, a good friend, he's a great dude, he is one of my patrol mates from Wood Badge, Mr. Jared. Now, Mr. Jared went to Baloo training, and then after Baloo training, he picked up a list of all the things that they ate there. So he went out there and printed each one of them out, sent all the recipes out to all of us out. And guess what? I got it right here. And the one actually caught my eye. It is so simple, so easy, but yet it's going to be delicious. I had to try it. So we're gonna try it today. So what we're gonna do is one pack one pot mac and cheese. Now all the kids really love mac and cheese. Okay, so this mac and cheese is not from a box. It's gonna be good and it's extremely easy to make. So what are we gonna need? Well, we are going to need a 12 ounce can of evaporated milk. Then we're gonna go and we're gonna need some elbows. So you need about a pound of elbows. So if you can't do the conversion, 16 ounces, it's a pound. We're also gonna need two cups of shredded cheddar cheese. Now you can use other cheese in this, and we're gonna use cheddar. You can use mozzarella, if you want it stringy, you can use uh, Kobe Jack, whatever you like, that's what you wanna put in there. Maybe you wanna put two cups of a mixture of like 10 different cheeses. Do it, it's your dish, do it like you want it. Also, just to spice it up a little bit, I'm gonna put a little bit of Parmesan in there just to get a little bit more of that, uh, that saltiness in there. So yeah, that's what we're gonna need. So uh, we're gonna need to hydrate all these noodles, right? So we need water. So we need four cups of water. So I just grabbed myself a jug, closed it off, put all my pre-measured uh, water in here. So if you're out there on the trail, you don't wanna bring measuring cups or anything like that. 
just go ahead and pre-do it. Prep before you go. So, uh, so that's pretty much it for the main main part of it, but we want to spice it up a little bit. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab some turkey kielbasa. So we're gonna cut this up, we're gonna pre-fry it. So we're gonna crisp up the outsides and actually cook it up. It's already pre-cooked, but we're gonna cook it just to get it a little crispy here in the kitchen before we go out onto the trail or out in the campsite. Once I cut that up, I'm gonna fry it and then I'm gonna put it in my Tupperware so that it is ready to go. So, oh, one more important thing. You gotta have salt, right? You don't have to have salt, but it'll make it taste a whole lot better if you put some salt in it. So what I'm gonna do is actually in my Tupperware, either in the meat or in the noodles. I'll probably do it with the, probably do it with the noodles, but I'm just gonna go ahead and pre-salt the stuff in my, in, uh, in my Tupperware so I don't have to bring my salt with me everywhere. Now they do have small salt packets. You can bring those as well. This is just what I do. And it seems to work. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and cut my kibasa up. I'm gonna fry it up. And then we're gonna go outside with the Dutch oven and start cooking this. Let's go. Okay, we are out in the wilderness. Actually, we're still in the backyard, but I wanted to go ahead and make this for the family tonight, and I'm gonna make it again for when we go camping. But you should be able to get the idea and be able to do it yourself. Common little things that you're gonna need would be maybe some tongs to move your coals around. If you don't have tongs, a good welding glove will actually work, work pretty well as well. You just don't wanna have third degree burns on your hands while you're out in the woods. Um, also, you need your stick to be able to lift up the handle for you. Dutch oven. Also gonna need some charcoal. Now go ahead and get the regular charcoal. If you get the match light, yes, it starts to light up, but it could um, transfer chemicals into your Dutch oven. You don't wanna do that. Oh, just my little tech tip. Anyway, so I have my cooler all ready to go. I have all my ingredients in there on ice, ready to be cooked up. Also, you can't go without this. You gotta have your Dutch oven. That's right, that's a 12 inch log. It works great. So some, here's some of the other things I have. Okay, as you can see, I am on a plastic table. But see, that's okay because I have, I have this little tray right here. Now it is all air underneath, so the heat is not actually getting transferred to the table. So we are good to go. I've been using this way for a while and I have not melted the table yet. So I have my chimney full of coals. As you can see, they are burning up right nicely. You gotta wait till they're white. If they're black, they're not ready yet. But we're gonna be able to put some underneath this thing and get this guy going. Now, <clears throat> a scout is thrifty, as we all know. So this uh, little tray right here, if you caught some of the videos, that's actually the bottom tray of my hot water heater. We replaced it not too long ago. I was like, don't throw that away. We can reuse it. So why you reuse it for Dutch oven stuff. Uh, it works great when you're out there uh, in the woods, only because you throw your coals down, you throw your Dutch oven on top, the, the uh, feet actually sink into the ground, and then it actually smothers your coals on the bottom. This tin keeps it up off the ground. It works fantastically. I've been doing it for a while. All right, so let's get this guy rolling here. So we have our Dutch oven. We're going to pull this aside, and then we are going to put our coals down. All right, so some of these are ready, some of them are not. I'm gonna take all the black ones, and put it back into my bucket, because we're gonna need some for the top of it. And by the time we're ready for it, you guys should be nice and, and ready. So we are going to start this off with getting this thing really hot. Now we wanna cook the initial stuff on high heat. So we're gonna use a lot of coals to be able to heat up our Dutch oven really quickly. So first thing we're going to do is fill this guy up. Let's go into our cooler. So first thing you're going to need is your evaporated milk. Oopsie. All right, evaporated milk. I'm going to add our water. And then we're going to add all of our noodles. Now, prior to, once I put everything into my Tupperware, I did grab some salt and actually filled this up. Not filled it, but you know, I seasoned it with salt. So that's all gonna go in the same time. All right, we're gonna stir that around, make sure everything is nice and coated. 
Now we're just gonna lid, put the lid on it and we're gonna let this boil. All right, so once this actually gets boiling, we wanna take some of the coals off the bottom and put them on top. We wanna reduce the heat on the bottom. So we're gonna put it on top to make sure everything is nice and hot. And then once we have it uh, boiled for a little bit, then we can start on the next phase. All right, let's go ahead and check it. We have all of our coals down there at the bottom. Starting to steam. We got a little bit of bubbles there. Let's make sure we stir it. We don't want it to stick or get lumpy. All right, so we're gonna put the lid on it. Now what we need to do, since it's already been heated up with high heat, we're gonna take the coals and we're gonna put a bunch of them on top. All right, so we got most of the coals on top. We did leave some on the bottom because we still want it to cook. Now we're gonna stir this about every minute or so. So we're gonna stir it about eight times because you don't want it to stick and you don't want it to clump together. A um, Couple of the things you wanna do, uh, if you saw any of the videos, you want to lift it up, turn the lid, turn the lid, and then also turn the actual pot itself. The main reason why you wanna do that is because maybe you have hotter coals on one side than the other. We wanna make sure that it is even all the way around. Same thing with underneath. You might have hotter coals or closer coals, whatever, on one side than the other. If you rotate it, it keeps it even all the way around. And hopefully you don't get too many hot spots. So that's a couple quick little tips there. So what we're gonna do is uh, let this sit for about eight minutes. On that eight minute mark, what we're gonna do then is we're gonna add our uh, turkey kielbasa that we cooked up earlier in our prep scenario. And the only problem with pre-cooking these is that most of the time you don't have a lot left for your dish because you got a snack on it while you're cooking. So keep it covered to keep you from eating the whole darn thing. So anyway, we're gonna mark it, and in eight minutes, we're gonna add the turkey kielbasa, so that can be warm with everything else. And then once at the 10 minute mark, all the noodles should be cooked all the way through. We're gonna grab our cheeses, and we're just gonna fold it in. Once you fold that in, I'm gonna put a little bit of garlic powder just on top, and then let it sit, all right? So I'm gonna see you in about eight minutes. All right, so it's been about eight minutes. The noodles are almost done. Time to put in the sausage, or the kibasa. Then stir that in. That's gonna heat that up. All right, so what we're gonna do now is actually take all the coals off. We wanna take it off the heat. We're gonna let the cast iron actually become our heat source for longer term. So once we get all the uh, charcoal off, we're gonna throw that into the fire pit. Always be safe with it. Douse it with water. Put it in a safe location. Don't let it start a fire anywhere else than other than where you want it. Also, um, once we get all the coals off, we're gonna take the lid off and then we're gonna add our cheese. And you're gonna see that here in a minute. All right, now it's time to add all the cheese. So we're gonna put our Parmesan. Just gonna dump the rest of the bag in there. There's only a little bit left. All right, so like I said before, we're only gonna put half of this bag in there because we only need about two cups. So now in this right here, when you're actually stirring, you want to go down to the bottom and pull up. And what that's going to do is actually keep you from actually tearing your noodles, getting it all sloppy. There you go. All right, another thing too, don't drain any of the water. We want to keep that water in there because this, that's actually going to bind with the cheese and actually become your slurry. So usually when you make homemade mac and cheese, you need to make a, uh, a roux. Well, the fluid that's actually at the bottom, that's your roux. Look at that, it's getting all sticky. All right, last thing, I wanna go just put a little bit of garlic powder on top. That's just gonna give a little extra flavor. Don't have much left, so I wanna put it all on there. Okay, so that's just a basic recipe to make some mac and cheese. Spice it up any way you really want to. Throw some peas in it, throw some broccoli in it. I didn't put any veggies in this one because my kids usually like it separate can't put it all together but that's okay if you're out in the woods throw some peas in it throw some uh some other kind of veggies in there just to make it even that uh that more healthy so what i'm gonna do with this is actually we're gonna take it aside we're gonna let it sit and it's gonna congeal up and actually make our mac and cheese so awesomely good 
So anyway, um, some other things you can do, put some breadcrumbs on top. Throw all your coals on top to kind of make like a broiler and actually put a little bit of butter and go ahead and put a crust on top. There's so many different ways you can do it. Use your imagination, make your own recipe, use this, build on it. It's gonna be fantastic no matter which way you go. So also stay tuned for all the other stuff that we actually are doing on the channel. Um, don't forget to go ahead and subscribe so that you can be entered into our contest. Uh, July 4th, 2021, I will draw somebody and get them a flag. I'm going to go ahead and make it myself. We're going to shoot a video on it just to make, let you know exactly how we made it. Um, it is going to be the Stars and Stripes because we're giving it away on 4th of July. So hopefully it will come out to, want, to be one of you. But you can't join it unless you subscribe. So go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Tell a friend. And then you can have... Ooh, so if you're watching it and your husband and wife are watching it, oh well, have them subscribe too. Then they, then you can have two chances of winning in the household. Your kids, it doesn't make a difference. So anyway, stay tuned, enjoy. Go ahead and take some of this stuff out on the trails. Remember to prep first. It makes life so much easier. Put it in your cooler, take it down there. You throw one ingredient in, you wait. You throw another one in there, you wait, and you put it in there. You're not chopping, you're not dicing, you're not doing any of that stuff you can actually get ready and be the hero, all right? Take it easy, have fun, and we'll see you out on the trail.